the reincarnation of His Holiness the Dalai Lama would take his place as temporal leader of Tibet. The symbolic seat of this mystical government became the Potala, a majestic monastery looming over the legendary capital city of Lhasa. Well into the 20th century, Tibetans remained virtually untouched by the modern world. The threatening thunder of a human storm grew louder in Tibet as the 20th century progressed. The communist revolution swept China, and with it came a surge of interest in controlling the land of Tibet. Invoking past diplomatic ties between Tibet and imperial China's various monarchies, Mao Zedong used these as a thin pretext for claiming Tibet's strategic location, rich geologic resources, and the headwaters of key Asian rivers. In 1949, he announced that Tibet would be returned to the motherland, vowing to fill the region with 60 million Chinese within 10 years. Under the guise of liberating the Tibetans from an archaic way of life, the army of the People's Republic began invading villages and monasteries. The tensions of their initial occupation and opposition to religion grew into an increasingly brutal campaign to replace Tibetan practices and people with their own. The world had not yet absorbed the shock of Hitler's Holocaust when a new one had ignited in Tibet. The degree of the destruction is difficult to comprehend or communicate. As the invasion swept across their country, Tibetans who proclaimed allegiance to the Dalai Lama were imprisoned, tortured, or killed, often in exceedingly gruesome ways. Over a million Tibetans lost their lives, a fifth of the population. All but a few of the 6,000 monasteries were destroyed, bonfires made of their libraries, mockery made of their artwork and icons. The Dalai Lama, through all this, was Tenzin Gyatso, identified as a boy on a Tibetan farm. Remarkably, he was able to complete his rigorous studies despite the invasion, and Tibetans placed him in charge as a young teen, hoping he could reclaim their country. After his many attempts to negotiate with the Chinese, Tibetans feared their beloved leader would soon be kidnapped and killed. In a dramatic escape, the Dalai Lama was taken out of Tibet under disguise across the mountains to India, where he was given refuge and established a government in exile in Dharamsala. Chinese cruelty escalated in the years following the escape of the Dalai Lama prompting a flood of Tibetans following His Holiness to India for refuge. Among them were a number of their revered yogis. After decades, the memory of that dark passage remains vivid. After His Holiness the Dalai Lama departed for India, then the class struggle and purge started and all those who had name, fame, or prosperity were purged. They were beaten up, their hair plucked, their ears chopped off. And I thought to myself, when we talk in terms of hell, this must be the real hell. Then those who did not have either name, fame, or prosperity, they were rationed a certain amount of land. Then a couple of years down the road, the Chinese would turn around and say, where did you get all these? You must be part of the class system. There was a lot of pain and suffering. I was in Chinese prison for nearly 20 years. In the prison, instead of going to sleep, I would make a conscious effort to sit up and meditate. On Sundays, it was mandatory for everyone to sleep and keep quiet and I would pretend that I was sleeping, but in my mind, I would meditate and quietly recite the mantras. 
When I left my homeland, there were about 3,000 in my group. When we reached India, there were only about 500 left. Many were killed on the way by the Chinese. Many died because of hardship in the journey, and many went back to Tibet. Many days we had to go without food, and also many people got hurt. If it had been under normal circumstances, the same trip would have taken three months. But because it was an escape during a war, it took two years. We had to defend ourselves against the Chinese nine times on the way. The fourth time, my father was caught by the Chinese. In the decades since the invasion, Tibetans in exile have attempted to recreate their life as it once was. In the Indian Himalayas, there remain places sacred to Tibetans from long ago in their history that have taken on a new preciousness since the destruction of their homeland. They've also established new monasteries and schools in refugee communities throughout India. The government in exile remains in Dharamsala, working to help their people rebuild their lives. At the center of their hopes remains His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. In the decades that have passed since fleeing the Chinese, he has accomplished what his predecessors would never have imagined. Worldwide recognition as one of the most extraordinary scholars, statesmen, and humanitarians of our time. Our nation, the people passing through very, very difficult situation, very difficult period. The period almost one ancient nation with unique and rich cultural heritage as well as spiritual heritage, now almost dying. I think, uh, firstly, as a quite a human nature, when someone, you see, uh, who have who, who get all power, uh, then eventually power spoil or destroy one's own sort of good facility, good quality. Then secondly, I think unfortunately, the totalitarian regimes, the communist sort of society or government system, is the, you see, dictatorship actually, I think, what say, legalized, isn't it? Uh, so once you see this certain sort of structure, you see created that way, then, then uh, this, the system or the structure itself, you see sometimes, I think you see, uh, help, you see, to, to produce that kind of, you see, the person. Uh, now, I think the uh, democratic China, China with open society, uh, freedom of religious belief, freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of information, I think that is the, uh, not only interest of the world community, but Chinese people themselves. But the destructive actions of the Chinese communist government have not been stopped after decades of diplomatic effort on the part of the Tibetans. And as they watch the flame of their culture slowly being extinguished in their native land, the tradition of the 